How's it going out there, YouTubers? Cyberneck Shark here with another new video for you. So let's get right into this video review and see what it's about. So this morning I had the chance of watching another 1001 Movies to See Before You Die video. Now, this particular movie was from 1954 and it was called Animal Farm. Now, Animal Farm is an animated drama comedy slash propaganda film. Now, if you're not familiar with what propaganda films were, they're basically films that the government made to help encourage and help enlighten the, you know, world on, you know, what to avoid, where we should stand, and, you know, what the bad guys or the foreigners are doing that are wrong. And so this propaganda film was an interesting way of really kind of explaining that and getting a new message out to the people of the world. Now, this film was, like I said, animated. And so it was one of the very first British animated films to be released over here in the United States. It actually wasn't released in Britain until like a month later after... It was actually released over here in America. Now, this film is based on a book of the same name by a gentleman named George Orwell. Now, George Orwell was a prominent and a huge uh, author uh, back in his time frame from the late 30s through the late 40s. And he actually was a journalist and a uh, essayist. I mean, he did all kinds of different things. In his short lifespan that he had, he had the chance of writing this interesting book that was the basis for the film. He actually, unfortunately, passed away in 1950 of tuberculosis, which was kind of sad because uh, he only lived to be 46, so that was kind of sucky. But his book still lives on today. And it was a big influence on the film and basically what the government wanted the, you know, American audience or the, you know, people to know. The film itself was actually directed by a animating couple that were married back in 1940 and decided to, you know, pursue this project in the year of 1951, actually. That's when it was given to them uh, for... Uh, you know, seeing if they could do it. And they ended up, you know, taking the offer and it ended up finally being done and uh, being put together by 1954. Now, this couple is John Halas and Joy Beckletor. Now, both of them, like I said, were a married couple and they were a huge animators for the British uh, back in the 30s, the 40s, and so forth. And they actually did a couple other propaganda films for the British government during World War II. Now, don't forget, this film was actually released shortly after World War II had finally ended and was put, you know, stopped to. It had only been uh, nine years since World War II had ended when this film got released. So the world was still kind of, you know, backlashing from all of what happened in World War II, and they were still dealing with, you know, a whole bunch of other you know, different higher powers trying to take over as well. So this film really was, like I said, just another way of the government trying to get that information out there. And this was actually, this film was produced by the CIA of the United States. I found that quite interesting, that they actually put their money into making this film to, you know, really try to bring justice to the world, you know, after, you know, this giant world war we had. But the film itself, like I said, was very interesting. It was very different. Uh, the animation was flawless. I thought it was really amazing animation. The version I saw was a really good, updated, upgraded uh, 1080 you know, P uh, version of the film. And so the it looked beautiful. I mean, for being 63 years old, it looked just amazing. Now... This awesome film had only two people doing voiceovers for the film. And the one gentleman did all the voices of the animals for the film. 
and he actually like did the voiceover you know work as the actual animal sounds and actually when a few of the animals actually talked in the film because a lot of it was narrated now this gentleman was an awesome actor that you might recognize from a lot of films in the 70s uh some other voiceover works that he did uh many many years ago this gentleman is none other maurice denham now maurice denham like i said he had done a lot of other bit roles and parts throughout the 60s and 70s i mean he did stuff in the 50s uh, but he was a giant radio personality as well and his voice in this film was really fun and the two different voices he did for the two different pigs that are in the film that actually do the talking uh he did a really good job of changing his voice an octave and making them sound completely different and so it was kind of interesting the narration of the film versus and only a little bit of other talking throughout the film that really made you want to pay attention and to see what was actually going on in the film now the other gentleman that was the narrator of the film was an interesting individual himself. He really didn't do much work through, you know, out the years. This was kind of his only claim to fame role. Uh, but he did do other bit voiceovers over the years, you know, before he died. And that gentleman is Gordon Heath. Now, Gordon Heath, like I said, he did a few other things over the years. But his mainstay was this film. And his voiceover and narration of the film was really well done, too, I thought. It really was precise, and it was very clear. And he made his points, you know, in a specific way in the wording that applying to, you know, these animals trying to, you know, clear themselves of these evil people, the clear narration really helped to bring to light what the movie was trying to get across. And I really appreciated that. I thought he did a good job. Now, like I said, this was a CIA filmed, budgeted, money put up for film. And I c still cannot believe that. I just found that so interesting and amazing. I, you know, I, I'm just still blown away by that fact. Um, but the film itself, like I said, is a very interesting film. This is definitely one I agree to be on this list just as for the simple fact that the meaning behind the film itself for the British was just an interesting concept of trying to get some information out there. Now, if you're not familiar with what the plot of Animal Farm is, it's pretty simple. Basically, what it is, is it's this group of animals living at this farm called Manor Farm. And they're sick and tired of not being fed properly and that being mistreated by the gentleman that's running the farm. So they basically cause an uproar and go against him and get rid of him so that they can run the farm themselves. So throughout them doing this and starting to do the farm themselves, there, of course, there's somebody else that wants more higher power and they try to overthrow the other person or creature and they successfully do and then they try to they take over so basically the whole plot of the film is basically about these animals trying to live you know in their own world take care of their own selves make means for themselves and not allow others to guide them and to you know rule them and so the whole uh, to me, the whole idea behind it, what they were trying to you know, explain is that we're not going to allow these bigger figures from these other countries tell us what to do or try to overtake us. And that's what the whole plot and the meaning of the movie was. And that's what I got from it. I thought it was very different, very interesting. Uh, but like I said, I thought the animation was amazing. Uh, just for its time frame, it you know it was very done and very well you know procured. It just was an amazing looking film. I'm really glad I got to see such a nice high definition picture of it too. Uh, but yeah, definitely I feel that this should be on the list of a thousand and one movies to see before die. Uh, I give this one a big, I would say eight golden movie boxes up on this one. I thought it was really well done. 
Uh, definitely something I might eventually add to my collection if I can find it uh, on a Blu-ray version uh, or even a, like, you know, out-of-print type of uh, DVD version because it did say in the Wikipedia that it did have a 2004 DVD release and a special DVD release. Um, I thought it'd be something interesting to kind of have in the collection simply for the fact that it's such an interesting and different type of film that, you know, it's definitely something that a lot of people should watch. Simply for the fact that it's just, it's such a n unique piece of history. And it really is, you know, a interesting movie. Uh, especially if, even though it's an animated film. I mean, I love all kinds of animated films, you know, from Disney to the CGI work that they're doing these days with DreamWorks and so forth. And this was ahead of its time. The animation was amazing. And it took 80 animators, that's how many animators they hired, to make this film. And I think that's an amazing feat for 1954. Uh, just awesome, awesome film. Uh, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Worth a watch. Uh, definitely deserves to be on this list, people. Uh, very interesting animated film. Uh, definitely something I would highly recommend. So that's it for this film review, folks. As always, thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe. Please leave your comments down below. Let me know if there's anything you'd like to see reviewed in future videos. Or if you have any ideas of any other type of video you'd like to see. As always, keep your eye out for any newer, older videos you might not have seen mine yet. As always, catch you in the next one, folks.